football is back. Manchester City are back tomorrow. The Premier League is back tonight and I'm absolutely delighted after a long but very successful transfer window. In my personal opinion, we finally got the good stuff back. The actual real good stuff. Football will be back tomorrow as we take on Brighton away. But there's a big preview here. It's long overdue, a season preview. But before I get on to that, if you haven't already noticed, I'm sponsored by One Football throughout August. The reaction to the last video was really, really nice. So cheers for all that. Go and download that app in the uh, in the description below because that means a lot to me. It helps keep this channel going. And it's actually worth it. It's a good app. I keep getting these little updates on my phone now every now and then. And it's stuff I actually care about, which is really useful. So I'd recommend it. I don't usually do sponsorships, but this one is something I actually like. So hence why. Uh, I'm being sponsored by them on this channel and it's really kind of them. So cheers, one football. Go and download it in the description below. Yeah, but for this season preview, I wanted to look at a whole host of things from transfers to squad depth to tactics to which players could stand out, what our expectations should be, and maybe what uh, we could do improving on last season, and just general have a huge overview um, of where we could be this season, what we could do, what Pep could actually bring to the uh, the team this year. Um, and I think we've got a, a lot of reasons to be positive, but I'm going to start initially with something that obviously be paying close attention to the transfer window. Now, personally, I think it's been a very, very good. Some, I think we looked at a lot of squad weaknesses and we decided we're going to sort them out. Mainly, obviously, the fullback situation. We signed three fullbacks for an extortionate amount of money, which has upset a lot of people, but made me really happy. De Niro looks absolutely fantastic already, as we've all seen in preseason. We've already seen uh, Kyle Walker look fantastic as well, and obviously, you've got Benjamin Mandy uh, to come as well. So, we've got options there. So, we basically signed three fullbacks when we had none as they all went this summer. And obviously, we signed Edison as well, and the early signs are very promising once again. That's another problem there that we've got and ticked off. Another problem that we solved given Bravo's form last year and also we got uh, Bernardo Silva to come, who is an exceptionally gifted player. The kind of player that we require when David Silva isn't there so we don't have this drop-off in form, this drop-off in ability to control the game. So as far as incomings have gone, it's gone pretty well so far. I'm really happy with this. There are obviously some talks still about signing the likes of Sanchez or Mbappe, but uh, I mean, they, they would be the icing on the cake for me. I think we've already made a vast step towards where we need to be in terms of signings. I think it's been a very successful window. We've seen some big sales as well. Obviously, Kelechi and Acho has gone, which I'm a little bit disappointed by, but I understand it. And also appreciate the fact that we've got a buyback clause. We've made good profits on Aramoy, Enos and Al. We've seen uh, some of the Deadwood go, Nalito, Navas, obviously Sanya, Clichy, Zavaleta, got to miss you, mate. Kolarov all moved on. Uh, plays that have been around for a long time and maybe weren't contributing to the level that we required to. Obviously, as well, there's still some to leave, like the likes of Nasri, Mangala, Boney, maybe Delp will leave as well. But it looks like we finally got a squad that Pep actually wants, a squad that has dynamism, has options, can move around the pitch with actual pace and aggression and implement all the things that he wants to do. So the summer, in my opinion, has been good. We've got a lot of young players out on loan at good places. Uh, the CFG, the whole network has seen the likes of uh, Yangel Herrera and Antuna just move on low and they've obviously got the Girona link up which is huge for the club in terms of sending young players there maybe uh, we'll see a star born in someone like Douglas Luiz or see Alex Garcia and Maffeo go from strength to strength over there um, and then we've got options as well over in Holland as well we've obviously got Selena on loan and uh, Angus Gunn on loan at, uh, at Norwich too so we've got basically all these clubs to move our players to so in terms of a network in terms of our transfer window it's been incredible incredibly positive for the likes of Cheeky and Soriano and I'm sure Pep is happy too because we've ticked off a lot of boxes maybe there's still a striker to come in maybe there's also a centre midfielder or maybe sorry a central defender to come in someone like Ben Gibson uh, someone like that I don't know I mean, my instinct is it won't happen but in general I think we should be very happy with the summer and how the squad's shaping up if you look at the squad depth and there's a graphic on screen somewhere now it looks good it looks lean it looks sharp it looks full of quality there are maybe some gaps there maybe a central defence were a little bit weaker because I don't bio my instinct is he'll go on loan and maybe I'm wrong there um and maybe central midfield were a little bit short potentially and you could argue for a striker but I'm not really too asked about that I see uh, Sterling maybe as an option we'll get that onto that later um and then maybe we are also short a fullback a little bit because we've only got obviously got Danilo's back up to Mendy and Walker it isn't ideal. Maybe we'll see someone like Fernandinho play out position or even we'll see someone like Dehaney get a chance if we need be but I like this. I like this squad depth. I think it's the perfect squad size. I think if you look at previous seasons and there's a graphic now on screen somewhere, it was kind of bloated by the likes of Fernando and Navas and Nelito's form dropped off quite a lot. And then we've seen a lot of players around that maybe 
we're only six out of ten. Now it looks like to me we've got quality all over the pitch. The player coming on now, the squad may be smaller, but the player come on will be an eight out of ten at least, as opposed to a six out of ten player going through the motions who needs that fitness to get to their seven out of ten level, but they don't get it because they don't play much. So I would rather this small, focused squad. Um, and rotate more sharply for the cup game. So we get someone like a Bernardo Silva maybe coming in. But then there you got a youngster like Phil Foden or Brahim Diaz playing alongside them as opposed to playing alongside Hazers Navas. To me, it's better. It's better. It gives us a tighter knit group. It gives us the younger lads more of an opportunity to get involved. And I do think we'll actually see someone like Foden or Ibrahim or someone actually get a chance this season because the squad has been trimmed. All that fat has been cut off. It isn't a bloated, aging mess anymore. And that's what it was at times last year. I know that sounds harsh, but I thought the squad was so unbalanced. I think we had so many problems throughout the team in terms of fullback in particular. And the keeper mess was obviously really, really uh, debilitating. But now it's good. As I said earlier, those boxes have been ticked off. If you look at an average 11 of a team, you've got uh, 11 players there, obviously, and three of them, and that's a big percentage of a team. That's just under a quarter, just over a quarter of a team. Um, Three of them were a keeper who was playing badly last season and two fullbacks from your cliche, Kolarov, Sanya Zabaleta, who just couldn't do what Pep Guardiola wanted. That isn't good. That isn't good when you've got a, uh, just under a third or just over a quarter of the team not playing and not, all not singing to the same hymn sheet. That's really, really negative. And now we've got 11 players who all know what Guardiola wants and who all can do and execute the plans that Guardiola wants. So we're instinctively around 30% better as a team because these players do what we want them to do. Edison keeps the ball out of the net. And they also have that old long kind of ball over the top situation. And the fullbacks are able to bomb forward. And we've seen in preseason already how useful that actually is. How Pep knows how to get the best out of fullbacks. Our squad depth is good. I am happy with it. Now, if you get someone like Mbappe or maybe another fullback or centre back, it just goes from excellent to incredible. It goes to the best squad in the league by some distance, in my personal opinion. But I'm happy with this and I'm excited. I'm excited by the youthful options we've got. I'm excited by the average age. I'm excited by the fact that it not being too big means some of the young lads can get a go as well. Obviously, as well tactically we've got a chance now to offer a little bit of variation we've seen the 3-5-2 situation used quite a bit uh, in pre-season and it worked to devastating effect we blew Real Madrid uh, West Ham Spurs away uh, we battered him we're being totally honest the, the dynamism offered by Danilo and Walker are wide and Sane at one point played at wing back which I think we'll see a little bit more of this season if we do uh, persist with this 3-5-2 thing well it was special it was really really good we had so much pace and uh, incisive uh, movement on the ball, the players, the little triangles forming with the likes of Danilo, um, uh, Jesus, Silver, and that lot just playing each other through. It was beautiful to see, and it's just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, Kevin De Bruyne, in my opinion, was the most beneficial of this, having the fullbacks around him, because he has the ability to pay passes and see things that most people simply don't. He is the one player in the team that you want to play a free ball, and because given the fact that he had Jesus, Aguero, Silva, um, and then Sterling, and then the fullbacks bombing forward ahead of him, he was able to play so many passes, and he just found them time and time again, and that will carry on the season. His assists and his goal ratio, I'm saying, will rock it this year, because he has the runners ahead of him now, and any playmaker is only as good as the runners ahead of him and obviously we could also play the 4-3-3 uh, that will appear a lot this season I'm sure it will um, but I suspect we'll see a lot of the 3-5-2 as well I think Aguero and Jesus I think Pep's trying now to see he'll actually work together but the options are there now to experiment a little bit we've got the wing backs and the full backs to actually uh, try things a little bit more differently and when Mendy comes in as well obviously he'll have that energy to bomb forward as well which makes the wing back situation a little bit more uh, viable the only thing we do like potentially is another centre back maybe we'll see someone like Danilo actually be trained to play centre back I would not be surprised if Pep put him on the right side of a three because he's physically huge he reads the game very well I would not be surprised at all because it's a very pet thing to do given the fact what he did with uh, Mascarano or Barcelona, if you think about things like that, what he did with Lam, what he did with Abidal at times, he will move players around because he's got the players to actually do it now. On the youth front, I think there's room for encouragement here. Yes, the Sancho situation has been an absolute fiasco, but we've got a lot of good young players now out on loan and clubs that I actually think will sue them. Look at NEC Breda, I think Ambrose and Fernandez and Garcia will do very well there and that's a good move for them in my personal opinion. I would be fascinated to see how the likes of Selena uh, and Angus Gunn get on in the championship and obviously we'll see where Roberts goes. I think he'll loan personally, but maybe not. Maybe he'll stay. Time will tell on that one. Uh, but until the actual EDS and the under-18s and so on, we've obviously now got got the likes of Foden uh, and Brahim and Dehaney buzzing around the squad and I think this is 
positive stuff. I think the fact that they've got a smaller, more focused squad, as I mentioned earlier, will help them a lot. I think Pepin definitely uh, intends to use them, and I think will happen if we're playing well. Now we've got rid of some of the dead wood from the team, I actually think these players will be given a chance to express themselves. Foden has clearly made a huge impression in preseason. Brahim didn't do himself any harm either, given the fact he's got a couple of wonder goals, well, one wonder goal and one incredibly smart finish. And Dehaney, people like him, and maybe someone like Matt Smith or whatever, uh, Muir, which obviously looked very good in preseason too, these people will be thinking, well, it's a smaller squad. I'm closer to the first team than ever. And rightfully so, because they'll all be playing in the EDS. I'm sure they'll all get a chance to uh, impress during the Checker J Trophy, where the B teams are finally in competitive football. Only three games, potentially, at, at least, anyway. But that'll give them a chance to press against, uh, you know, pros. People who actually do this for a living full-time, not just other kids. Uh, so the season for the youth lads... I think we'll see some in the first team. Looking forward to seeing the under-18s get going. I'll do a preview video on that at some point, but we've got a whole host of young talent there to be excited by. It's a whole new generation, a whole new team moved up, like the likes of Bobby Duncan, Taylor Richards, Ogunbi, Ogbeta, uh, I think uh, Tommy, uh, Tommy Doyle as well. Uh, the infamous Tommy Doyle, the, son, uh, the grandson of Glyn Pardo and Glyn Pardo even, and Mike Doyle. That's a hell of a, a blue heritage. He's with the under-18s now, despite only being an under-16. He's moved up as well so we've got a lot to see there um but yeah i'll go into that in more detail in the video but in terms of youth integration this year it could be interesting we see one or two young lads get a few games and i think this will happen i'm more than happy with that for now and on to the expectations bit and what do we predict this is the hardest thing but i'm gonna say it i think we're gonna win the league Famous last words, but we'll look around the other squads and I just think we've got a better team. I think United have obviously improved a little bit in terms of being more of a Mourinho kind of team. Lukaku is a good player. I just personally don't really fear him. I know that sounds crazy, but I'd rather have Jesus and Aguero. And I think their system very much is what it was last year, but with a few more nuts and bolts, you know, it's a little bit more mechanical, a little bit more ruthless potentially but I don't see them challenging for the title I think mean, Lindelof is a good little player Matic just further adds to that kind of industrious vibe but I don't think they have the overall quality to actually uh, reach the top Chelsea I've had a bit of a disaster for some in my personal opinion losing out on Danilo losing out on Lukaku Marat is a good signing but I don't think he's going to win in the league personally again I think they'll find it a lot more difficult this season given they've got European football and Liverpool there, see, their summer's been very average, and Spurs are obviously a mess at the moment. They've signed no one, lost Walker, Danny Rose is kicking off. I think they're permanently going to be around the top four, but not win the league. Arsenal, I just do not fear at all, personally. I think we've just made so much progress this summer, and the way we're playing, Pep finally has what he wants. He has the season behind him, he's got the squad he wants. I just think we're going to blow some teams away. Call it naive optimism, but I think we've finally got the system, the players to really capitalise on what we want from Pep Guardiola's methods, and I think we will get there. In terms of domestic cups, I'm hoping we'll get to the final, at least in one or two of the... Well, what, one at least. I'm sure we'll probably even win one if we have the squad, which we do now, to uh, rotate players cleverly and make sure none of them get long-term injuries and all that kind of stuff. And the Champions League... I don't know. I'm not going to break a prediction on this. I would hope for around the semi-finals, but I don't want to sound too ambitious. Let me know in the comments what your predictions are. But for the league, I think it's going to be our year, personally. I'll be honest. If I was to choose a player this season, I think it's going to be Kevin De Bruyne. As I said earlier in the video, I think he's going to absolutely thrive in this system with runners ahead of him. I think he's going to love having the likes of Walker, and Mendy, Danilo, bomb past him. Never mind Sterling's improved focus in preseason. His goal-scoring form seems to have gone up. He'll be running off him. Jesus, Aguero. And I think we'll see the best of De Bruyne. And I think he'll be setting people up, getting loads of assists. And I think he'll, he will personally probably even be up there for the PFA Player of the Year. I know it's hard for a City player to win it, but I think he's got a good shout. And I think he'll be a main man this season he's looked absolutely phenomenal in pre-season he's gone up a level already and I think we're going to see the best of him this season in terms of the breakout start it could be Phil Foden he's my bet there I think he's going to surprise a few people this season and on to the Brighton preview and this is only going to be a short one because there's nothing really to judge anything against obviously we've been great in pre-season but there's no real actual form to judge this against so I'm just going to hope for the best and hope we win and I'm sure we probably will if I'm going to be honest I was suspected to be around 3-1 I think we'll uh, kind of be a little bit too much for a Brighton team that has no experience at this level whatsoever. This is obviously their first year as a Premier League team and I'm delighted for them. It's good to see a fresh face in the Premier League. They were very good last season, pipped to the Championship title by Newcastle, but they're up here now and they deserve to be up here. And they've made a few decent signings as well. Davy Proper has come from PSV. Obviously, he's a Dutch international. He's got Champions League experience as well. And they've signed uh, Pascal Gross as well from FC Ingolstadt 0 
Jerome Fuller. It's very hard to pronounce that name, that German team. Uh, he was the Bundesliga's most creative player last season. 94 key passes. That is some going. For, for around 3 million, he could be a snip there alongside proper midfield. And obviously, they've got knockout in as well. And Izzy Brown from promotion rivals. Huddersfield, uh, he's a decent little player as well. But I still think we'll probably be too much for him. Uh, I think they'll be overwhelmed by the pace and the, uh, the technique that we've got on the ideas and the invention. And I think it'll be fun. Obviously, as well, as a little bit of breaking news that uh, Pep apparently considers Foden as a first-team member this season as the backup to the senior midfielders. And he could be on the bench against Brighton as well. Imagine that if he made his debut against Brighton on the first day of the season. That would be something else for the young Stockport Iniesta. I like that title. Hopefully, it sticks. Uh, so, yeah, the first game of the season... Not much to say other than I think we're going to win. In terms of the lineup, I would suspect it would be something like 3 5 2. I think we'll go for that. Edison in goal, then uh, Company, Stones, and Otamendi are my choices there at the back with Danilo on the left, Kyle Walker on the right, and Torre behind Silva and De Bruyne. Um, and who <laughs> I think it'll be. It's hard to say, isn't it? It's very hard to say. I think then obviously it'll be Aguero and Jesus, which obviously means the likes of Sane uh, and Sterling potentially on the bench. Who knows there? Let me know your team predictions. That could be absolutely miles off. It could even be Sterling alongside Aguero or something like that with Jesus on the bench. All I know is that it's incredibly hard to predict this lineup. Uh, so let me know in the comments what you think it'll be. But I'm going for a 3 1 victory. Anyway, guys, if you haven't already, go and download the One Football app. Uh, it'll mean a lot to me. It helps keep this channel going. And. What are your thoughts on the new season? I am absolutely buzzing. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Drop a like on the video and I will see you next time. This one's for all the Patreon subscribers uh, who've helped me over the past three or four months. I want to do a quick message and say thank you for all the support. It's been meaning a lot to me. It's kept me going uh, and it's helped me make this channel almost viable by itself. I'm nowhere near that stage yet, but hopefully one day I'll be able to do this uh, a lot more professionally, put more time, more editing to it. But as it is, I've obviously got a job, I've got uh, a life, I've got a band, I've got a girlfriend. I have very little free time. So every video that I squeeze in is because you guys make it worthwhile doing. So I appreciate that loads. All these names scrolling down the side now. This is a little thank you for all you've helped me uh, keep going during this transfer window, keep going over the summer, because it's been quite hard financially at times. And running a YouTube channel takes a lot of time, but I enjoy doing it and the fact that I get something back from you guys um, that means a lot. Uh, hopefully I'll do something for the Patreon supporters during the season because you guys deserve a little something for that and hopefully you, you, you'll get a say on input and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, to all these people here scrolling down the side of the screen, thank you for supporting the channel during the summer. It really, really means a lot to me because I do this because I like it. So to get something back from you guys, that's just special. I really can't describe that. So thank you. Hopefully you'll all enjoy the season uh, and I'll get a lot of exciting stuff over on Patreon for you soon. Cheers.